was uh, a pilot in the Navy. He was uh, a very good pilot. He flew F-14s. He went to Top Gun school. And he enjoyed flying very much. He was a very gifted flyer, very talented. Enjoyed the flying, it was uh, great training. And uh, um, we started in high school, we were high school sweethearts. And uh, we met um, in high school. He asked me to his senior prom two days before. And uh, I told him, that I didn't have a dress to wear, I had to ask my mom. And from that point on, we had dated, and, um, and we uh, dated six and a half years before we finally got married. Jennifer and Tommy were both born when Tom was in the Navy. When my adventure is over, this entire is anybody fun talking? We, we really had traditional values, but we were a very non-traditional type of family. Go. His first airline job was with American Airlines, and he was with American Airlines for 12 years as a first officer. This was uh, Tom in the cockpit of a 767. The day before September 11th, we celebrated Tom's 42nd birthday and had a birthday party for him. I made him a non-fat cheesecake. We sang happy birthday to him and my children gave him some presents. He had just gotten a new car that he had really liked and so I just picked him out a few little, um, little gifts from the heart that um, that I thought he'd really appreciate. I got him a car and um, smell and scent that was really nice and it was like an apple cinnamon country thing. And, and uh, I got to say some very special things to him. I told Tom that God had changed, shaped, and molded him and that I was so honored to be his wife. And that was just the night before September 11th. On September 11th, Tom got up and gave me a kiss goodbye and left for work. He left uh, early, it was about five o'clock in the morning. He was gonna fly from Boston to Los Angeles that day. Uh, the morning of September 11th was uh, very interesting. I start work every day close to 7.30, and my wife goes to work between, you know, she's at work between 8.45 and 9. But that morning, she wanted to go early to work, and uh, she was close to four months pregnant with our first child then. And before she was pregnant, she would go to work with me, and although it would be early for her, she would just hang around at the towers, have breakfast. But ever since she had got pregnant, she would go a little, sleep a little longer. So that morning, but that morning when I woke up, I saw her also getting ready, saying she wants to go early to work. I had just finished driving my kids to school, that morning and I had just finished praying. Close to 8.45, I was just in the fax machine uh, faxing some documents to our office in Philadelphia when I heard and I felt this thunderous explosion. And so when the plane struck, what, the plane actually struck a few floors above us. The wing of the plane came in through our floor. There was fire in our floor. The ceiling started going down. The walls started breaking. And, uh, and there was total commotion. And uh, we could hear and we could see the building tilting to the left. So in my human strength, I said, God, this is it. I'm going to die soon. I uh, heard my phone ring and I ran in to answer the phone. And it was a friend asking if Tom was home. I said, no, he isn't home, he's on a trip. What's going on? Just then, my second phone line started ringing, and it was another friend asking for Tom. I said, oh, this is strange. I have, I have Bob on my other line, and you know, now you're asking for Tom. What's going on? I, I had an understanding that uh, Tom was possibly involved, and I called uh, Cheryl's house to find out if she knew anything. 
Well, they were very hesitant to tell me anything on the phone, but I, um, they told me that a, a plane had been hijacked and that they were on their way over to my house, uh, he and his wife. And I quickly found the remote control to the TV and, and tried to turn it on, but none of those buttons worked. Um, and as I was trying to figure out what was going on, my kids were already hearing something from school. And I was at school, and I don't think I can talk about it. I'll be right back. <laughs> I was frantic. I, I was confused. I didn't know what was going on. I called all the pilots that I knew. I called American Airlines. I paged Tom. I called his cell phone. I was calling everybody I knew to try to find, find something out. My house quickly filled with people. I don't even know what they were saying. My mind was just racing, thinking, Tom, why aren't you calling me? I need you to call me now. I was on the floor for about five minutes. After about five minutes, I heard our manager say, stay calm, let's head to the stairwell. Anyway, I started running down the building and uh, people, on every floor there'll be hundreds of people who would join us down the stairwell. At that point of time, no one in their wildest dreams imagined that the building might actually go down. And while we were coming down the stairwell, we heard another explosion. We had no idea what was going on, but there was a second plane hitting Tower 2. I was watching on television as I saw airplanes going into the buildings, thinking, no, this isn't Tom, this can't be Tom. Women were praying with me. I was in disbelief. They would not have an accident where they would fly into a building. They were highly trained pilots. That wouldn't have been an accident but I was in disbelief that it would be anything. I, I didn't know. I was so confused watching. When I reached the mezzanine level of Tower 1, there was an escalator leading us down to the lower level, which is the mall level. And before I got down to the escalator, I looked on my left to the glass windows and doors of Tower 1. And when we saw the picture of death, people were breaking down because now people realized that many had died and we were seeing these bodies. And I remember these firemen telling us, don't even look on your left, just turn on your right and go down those flights. You reach the lowest level, find an exit, and just get out of the building. When we were at the mall level, I saw people being let out of different exits of the World Trade Center. So I decided to walk closer towards Tower 2, because I said if my wife has not made it to the building, she could be standing somewhere near Tower 2. So I got to the revolving door, I actually stepped out of the revolving door when I heard a loud explosion and I saw dust and fumes coming in towards me. The very building that I was standing against was going down. That was Tower 2 finally going down. I looked around, there were 15, 20 people around me. The next thing that we did, we huddled one on top of the other against the wall of Tower 2, even as the building was raining down. And something in my heart said, where are these people going without Jesus Christ? And I started crying out Jesus and I asked these 15, 20 people to cry out Jesus after me. After about 20 minutes, I felt that I should get up and I, when I got up, I, I realized that I was plastered with soot. I couldn't breathe, I couldn't see anything because I was surrounded in smoke. But I walked a little back and I, and I took a look at the place where we had prayed about 20 minutes back. And I saw another horrific scene which I didn't want to see because those 15, 20 people who had prayed with me, they did not make it. Somebody must have called and said the chief pilot is on his way to my house. Now I wasn't convinced that he was going to tell me that, that Tom was dead. I, I was not um, prepared to hear that at all. I do remember seeing the car pull up and the chief pilot got out of his car. He was with two or three other men that walked up my driveway and they came into my house and I was just 
saying, no, make them go away. Closing my eyes, saying, make them go away, not even looking at them for about 15 minutes, saying, make them go away. I don't want to see them. But they stayed, and they didn't go away. He said that Flight 11 had been hijacked and flown into the World Trade Center and that there were no survivors. And I just went hysterical, screaming, no God, please don't call him home. Please don't call him home. Please God, just begging God with everything I had. I really felt like I was just before the creator of the universe saying, please God, not that, not that. Don't call him home, please. But he called him home. And my heart was disintegrated. I was devastated. And then I quickly realized that I needed to go call, tell my children. And they were at their school. I thought I was the only person there. But when I looked around, I found someone else alive. When I picked him up, I realized that he was an FBI agent. And I saw a red light flashing through the soot and through the smoke. So we turned and started walking closer to this light. The closer we got to this light, I realized that this light was coming out of an ambulance. They were all completely crushed and smashed. But the front part of this ambulance was still standing. The light was still flashing. So it was close to 12.30, 12.45, I was just running, not knowing where I should go. I entered the store and there was a young girl who came up to me and started removing glass from my head. And she gave me water and she was trying to help me and she said, let me call your family for you. And I said, what family? My wife is dead. But I gave her my cell phone and she started going through the numbers that were stored in my cell phone. And my cell phone started ringing for the very first time on September 11. So she handed me back the phone. I flipped the phone and I saw my wife's caller ID on the phone and I said, this is not her. Someone else has got a hold of her phone and is trying to reach me with the news that she's dead. But I flipped the phone and I realized that it was my wife on the other side. I was like, babe, you're alive. And, and he was like, he said the same thing to me. It didn't register to me that he had gotten out alive. She, uh, she got off the subway train, got to the World Trade Center, and she was about to take the elevator when she saw people running out of the World Trade Center saying Tower 1 has been hit. So she started running out and when she goes, she started running, she turned back and she saw people jumping out of Tower 1 because I was working on the 81st floor. The top part of the building by then was in fire and she thought I was dead. In that moment, knowing what it felt like to have my heart just disintegrate inside of me, and then to have to go to my kids' school and tell them that news was the hardest thing I ever had to do. by the look on my face that I had bad news to tell them. All I could say to them is Jesus called Daddy home. And they knew what that meant. And we hugged, we cried, we held each other. And I reassured them that God would take care of us, that we would be okay, as awful as that moment was. Every time I come here, I always think about what Tom said. Do you remember what Dad said about the beach and the waves? Yeah. how our family was blessed with wave upon wave of blessing and the Lord continues to do that and every time I see those waves rolling I think of that where do you think I should park down here or here well that's why let's go on this side so we can uh... oh, this is awesome do you want to just leave our shoes on? stop <laughs> I miss
miss telling him I love him. And I miss hearing him tell me that he loves me. But in my heart of hearts, I so clearly hear his voice say, Cheryl, press on. Go. Go forward. And I do, one day at a time. It is hard to miss, you know, I do miss my dad a lot. And I'm still hurting, and it hurts to think of the horrible things that probably happened on that airplane. But that doesn't mean that I have to think about it. I just need to go to my heart and remember the times that I've had with him. And, and that'll just bring nothing but joy to me. I hate the evil that has been done. And I know that justice will be done, but justice is not mine to give. Justice will be done by the Lord. I don't have a spirit of anger inside of my heart. Neither do my children. Um, we were driving to school one day, and Jennifer said, Mom, I'm so glad you're not angry at God. I said, Jen, I'm glad you're not angry either. She said, Mom, I know God didn't cause this to happen. God is what's getting me through this. He said, Mom, do you know how Dad described eternity to me? I said, no. He said, Dad described eternity this way. If you took all the bodies of water and combined them and took out one drop at a time, this would only be the beginning of eternity. We'll be with Dad forever. He's up there building a room for us. We'll be with Dad forever, Mom. Don't cry now. We'll be with Dad soon. I thought, thank you, God, you know, to hear that perspective, an eternal perspective from my children, to hear that my children aren't angry at the people, they're angry at the evil, lifts me and comforts me. September 11th is a part of our journey. We don't like it. We didn't ask for it. But we are accepting that September 11th is a part of our journey.